Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another video. Recently, we built an interactive gaming PC. We ended up with an AMD Athlon 1 GHz with a PowerVR Cairo 2 video card. Now, I read the comments and uh, you requested me to check out a lot of other things. So today, we're looking at how the GeForce 2 performs in that same machine. Now, there will be a proper video review on all of these cards. So this is just a comparison between the Cairo 2 and the GeForce 2 GTS in that one gigahertz Athlon computer. If you wanna know more about that project, I'll put some links down below in the description. Now with these shootout and comparison videos, I'll try hard to ensure that the information is correct. So I use disk imaging software before installing the video card drivers. And that lets me then uh, roll back to the previous image, swap out the cards, install the drivers, and that way I don't have any uh, leftover drivers and any issues. I also do two or three runs just to catch any outliners and to have more confident results. Basically, especially for 3D Mark, the 99 Max tends to have a higher score in the first run and then drops off in performance. So let's start with 3D Mark 99. Here we can see the Cairo 2 is a tiny bit ahead of the GeForce. In 3D Mark 2000, however, the GeForce 2 is ahead. Now note that this benchmark uses hardware TNL on the GeForce 2. Now a couple of me wanted me to do two things with the TNL. You wanted me to test the GeForce 2 with the hardware TNL disabled. And we can see here that it loses quite a bit performance and ends up behind the Cairo 2. Now another comment I saw was to check out the enhanced TNL option in the Cairo 2 driver. That's basically a software emulation. It tricks the system into uh, having a telling the system it's got a hardware TNL, it doesn't really have one and it does it in software. And we can see that this actually ends up uh, hurting the performance. So this might be useful if you're running into a game that requires a TNL and won't work otherwise, but the performance is uh, reduced. So we're getting only 4,500 uh, points in this benchmark. Moving on to incoming, the GeForce 2 is way faster. That's pretty much a 50% lead. In expendable, however, the Cairo 2 is faster. This has all to do with overdraw and games that have a lot of overdraw with things being rendered that are actually not visible on screen. The more you have that, the more efficient the Cairo 2 becomes. And here we're getting 108 FPS uh, compared to around 79 FPS for the GeForce. Cranking up the resolution, the Cairo 2 is still ahead. And at 1600 by 1200, the GeForce actually crashes to the desktop. Uh, it doesn't complete the benchmark. In Draken, the Cairo 2 is also faster, 82 FPS compared to 62. Improving the resolution, the Cairo 2 is still a little bit ahead, but the lead is shrinking. And at 1600 by 1200, the cards are basically identical. Now OpenGL, this is where things become interesting. The NVIDIA cards are always strong in OpenGL. Still to this day, for some reason, they just know how to do OpenGL really well. So the Cairo 2 gets 116 FPS and the GeForce 175 at the highest result. At 1280 by 1024, the GeForce is still way in front. And the same happens for 1600 by 1200, 76 FPS compared to 46. In Quake 2, the GeForce 2 is also quite ahead, but the lead is not as significant as in GL Quake. At 1280 by 960, we got 122 for the GeForce compared to 93 for the Cairo 2. And at 1600 by 1200, 79 FPS for the GeForce compared to 60 FPS for the Cairo 2. Quake 3 is an interesting benchmark. There's not that much of a performance difference, 107 compared to 98. At 1280 by 1024, we're getting 69 compared to 64. And at 1600 by 1200, 46 compared to 44. Serious Sam is the most demanding game in our benchmark run. And here the GeForce 2 offers 68 FPS, whereas the Cairo 2 does 47. Now with Serious Sam, something interesting happens when we increase the resolution. The GeForce loses quite a bit of performance, but it was a lot faster at 1024 by 768 to begin with. Whereas the Cairo 2 uh, stays a lot more consistent and delivers 46 FPS in this benchmark and is actually ahead of the GeForce. And as we increase the resolution even further to 1600 by 1200, the Cairo 2 now has a nice lead, 36 FPS compared to 27. 
a quick look at power draw and that's measured at the power supply. The Karo 2 is a little bit more efficient, drawing 89 watts compared to 93 watts at idle, in Quake 2 101 compared to 104 watts, and in Expendable we're getting 103 compared to 107. So going over these benchmark results, we can see that in direct 3D that don't use transformer lighting, the Karo 2 is actually a very decent card and is faster than the GeForce 2 GTS in many games. In OpenGL and the Quake games, the GeForce just dominates. The Karo 2 still offers playable performance, but there's no denying that the uh, GeForce 2 renders OpenGL games and especially the Quake games a lot faster. Zero Sam is an interesting game with the GeForce losing more performance with the higher resolutions and the Karo 2 staying a lot more consistent as you crank up the resolution. The Karo 2 also draws less power, all about efficiency and that's probably the reason why power VR technology lives on in mobile devices. So over the last few days I used both cards quite extensively and I've used a lot of GPUs in the past. So um, how did I go? Basically the GeForce 2 works great. It's got excellent drivers. However, you need to install the cool bits registry tweak in order to unlock all the VSync options. And in Expandable, unfortunately, we got a crash to the desktop at 1600 by 1200. That's likely a driver bug. If you try an older or new driver, it might fix the issue. Now with the Power VR, I really love the drivers. All the options are on a single page, you don't have to look around. Uh, you press F1, it gives you detailed help information and the VSync controls are integrated. You don't need additional software like with uh, 3DFX or NVIDIA to unlock those options. Also, the image quality stood out. Uh, it draws a fantastic image. Um, and if you look, look at some of the reviews that talk a little bit about how the card operates, um, it renders everything in 32-bit internally, even if the game is in 16-bit. So uh, image quality is top-notch. And I had zero issues with any of the games. I tried all the resolutions. I didn't see any uh, graphics glitches or anything that looked odd. So highly impressed with the drivers. But of course, we have the benefit of being able to use the latest and greatest drivers. So to sum it up, we have two different approaches to drawing graphics. The GeForce has a massive chip, lots of transistors, fast DDR memory with huge bandwidth and throwing brute force at the problem. Whereas the Cairo 2 from PowerVR is all about efficiency, having a small chip using cheap SDR memory and going smart about rendering the image. We're getting mixed results. In direct 3D, the Cairo 2 is definitely a lot stronger, being able to beat the GeForce 2 in many games. In OpenGL, however, it's a landslide victory for the GeForce 2. There's just no way around that. All in all, both GPUs are really fantastic and I can recommend both of them. Now, the Cairo 2 just stood out to me because I've never used it before. I've always heard about it um, and it was time to check it out and I'm really happy I checked it out. It's such an awesome card with fantastic drivers, image quality. It's got a lot of things really going for it. A real shame that the Cairo 2 got shelved and um, they decided to not pursue PC graphics cards anymore. Also worth noting, of course, is the price. Back in the day, these cards were the budget options compared to the more expensive alternatives from 3DX, NVIDIA and ATI. These days, you will probably have to look a little bit harder for the Cairo 2, but uh, I checked yesterday and I still could find some cards for around 20, 30 euros on there. So um, prices haven't gone to the extremes of some Voodoo cards, but uh, they're still out there and fairly affordable, but definitely not a bargain card by any means. And that's it for this video guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. Check some of the video links down below in the description about this 1GHz interactive project. Like or dislike the video and leave me a comment down below and otherwise I shall see you soon with another video.